Hello there, people of the internet. I definitely should not have stayed up all night drinking whiskey, because man, I'm feeling it today. Um, I am here today to show off a new firearm that has not been seen on this channel yet, at least I don't think it has. Um, I've had this gun for a little while now, but just because of the ammunition availability, uh, I have not really shown it off uh, or made a video about it of any real significance. So that's kind of what I'm doing here today. This right here is an M38 Carcano chambered in 735. It is really humid out here and my gun has a nice film of water on it so I'll have to make sure that I dry it off whenever I'm done with this. But anyone who uh, delves in the gun market, the gun community, they know that Carcanos are being imported from Ethiopia by the truckload. Well I actually got this from before the imports started happening from Ethiopia. This right here is a rifle that I bought off of a friend of mine, it was a private sale. And all things considered, I wish I knew that the surplus was going to be coming in, because I spent a little more on this rifle than I would like to. But also, then again, I was there in person to see the rifle, so... It's sometimes whenever you buy surplus, it's kind of hit, hit or miss depending on what you get, and in this particular case, I really like this rifle. This rifle is not only in really, really good shape, but on the back, somebody did in fact carve their name or initials or whatever that is on the stocking. I always love getting something that I know was actually carried and used. So today, I actually have a little bit of a treat. A 735 ammunition is very, very difficult to find. Only one, maybe two companies make it modern day. And with the surplus of Carcanos coming in, they are like constantly out of stock. So, I actually managed to find some original production 1939 735 ball ammunition. This right here is literally exactly what the Italian military was using whenever they issued out these rifles. I have ran a couple of rounds. Uh, they're all hang fires, which is, of course, to be expected. It's definitely old ammunition, and I doubt it was kept uh, in very good conditions. Now a little bit of background behind these rifles and why uh, 735 is so much less common to find than 65 Carcanos. Uh, the Italians had the 65 Carcano, they adopted it as one of their first, if not the first, uh, smokeless powder round that they were going to be running through their rifles. They were fiddling around with a couple of different rounds that they were considering using, but they settled on the 65. Well, come World War II. Uh, the Americans had the 30 out 6, the uh, Germans had 8mm, Russians had 54 rimmed, uh, the French had the 7.5, etc, etc, British had the 303. Uh, the Italians were kind of like sitting there looking at their little 6.5 and they were like, ah, this is why they won't date me. <laughs> I wonder how many people, you know, just had that joke go over their heads. So come like 1938, Italy decides, you know, we should probably update our rifles as well. So they come up with the M38, very, very similar to some of the rifles that they were using. This right here is a 6.5, uh, 9124. This right here is their troop special rifle. Very, very similar rifles. The bullets themselves are also extraordinarily similar. So in 1938, Italy decides, hey, this is a great idea. Let's outfit all of our soldiers. And then come 1940, Italy's like, oh god we're in the middle of a war and and giving you know these troops this rifle and these troops this rifle and having them both look damn near exactly the same and trying to ship different kinds of ammo to both you know uh, types of soldiers and then we got to factor in the machine guns that are using different types of ammo they're like oh god this is a nightmare we don't want any of this so they dropped the 735 project despite the fact that they made a bunch of these guns uh, and they went immediately back to 6.5. There's a lot of M38s that are actually chambered in 6.5. Personally, I'd love to get my hands on a 6.5 uh, M38 simply because I really, really like this gun. I just wish the ammunition wasn't $2 a bullet. Now, I did mention this right here was a private sale that I got from a friend of mine. Uh, this particular gun is not from Ethiopia. It does, in fact, have the uh, Finnish stamp on it, so this rifle did come from the Finnish arsenal. Uh, back in 1940, Ita or Italy donated or gave or sold or whatever. Uh, they gave Finland like 95,000 rifles, if memory serves. Uh, they were pretty much all M M38s. I'm like trying to think about the numbers. <laughs> God, I just keep hearing 
The fucking numbers! I'm like trying to think while I'm trying to speak and it's not quite coming out correctly. Anyway, a good portion of uh, the M38s that you're going to find here in the United States are from whenever the Italians gave their M38s to the Finnish. So I figure, may as well go ahead and show off this rifle because my friend that I got this from, I'm not sure if he watches all of my videos, but I know he knows my videos exist and I know I'm gonna see him again. And last time, last couple of times I saw him, he's like, hey man, have you made a video on my rifle yet? Not yet, buddy, uh, need to find ammo, but hey, I found the ammo, and uh, the 7.35 and the 6.5 Carcano clips are exactly the same, and luckily I have one 6.5 Carcano clip. So, unfortunately this clip does suck. <laughs> this is actually an original, I'm not sure what date of production, it says RRM36, so don't know, but it is an original Carcano clip. So we're running an entirely original rifle right here with original ammunition, original clip. There's just something special about it. <laughs> the one real legitimate downside of the uh, Carcano uh, rifle in general is uh, it uses a Monlicker style clip, meaning you need the clip itself. It's got the feed lips built into the clip itself. It stays inside the gun. You need that clip to run the rifle. Like with a, a Mauser or something, you don't need the stripper clip, you can just load the rounds right into the rifle. You can't do that with this rifle. You can load one round at a time into the chamber, but if you want anything more than a single shot rifle, you're going to need that little, little stupid steel clip that doesn't work half the goddamn time. Let's see if she decides to work this time. Oh, hey, look at that. We loaded a round. All right, now like I said, these are hang fires, almost all of them. Actually, every single one I've fired so far. Haven't fired much, but from the ones i fired, they're all hang fires. So I'm probably not going to be very accurate because I'm not very accurate to begin with. Yep, there's that hang fire. Okay, there we go. That one right there did not hang fire. How do you like that? You know, normally this clip gives me some real trouble, but today it is not. Like I'm managing to run this really well, all things considered. Oh, there we go. Now she's giving me trouble. Hey, stop that. <laughs> you get back in there, you son of a bitch. There we go. Look at that, we had a couple rounds fire that weren't hang fires. And my clip needs to come out of that rifle. Excellent. Okay, well we actually managed to hit like all but one of those. And I, 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 feel, I feel really good about that. This is a really pleasant rifle to shoot. Anyone who ever has the chance to uh, fire one of these, you're gonna have the chance to pick one up. They're being imported by the truckload from Ethiopia. Anyone who has the chance to actually fire one of these, that's the kicker, firing one of these. They're very nice. Very, very nice little rifles. Now, although I will admit the 735, although considerably more powerful than the uh, 6.5 is, I prefer firing the 6.5 only because it is a lighter recoiling round. So I have some modern production 6.5 ammunition that I'm going to be running through my 9124 Troop Special Carbine. I wanted to run these rifles like side by side because I wanted to get a good comparison for them. I fired them both separately, but I want to do a side by side test to see which one I genuinely prefer. Now personally, I can pretty much guarantee it's going to be the 6.5, but that 7.35 is far from unpleasant. All right, here we go. This should not be hang fires. Oh, that's, that's so much lighter recoil. Of course, this clip sucks, like I said. Get in there, you bastard. There we go. Uh, the sights on these rifles are sighted out to either 300 or 400 yards, I can't quite remember which. So I'm having to aim like significantly under the target. We're only sitting at about 50 yards here. 
Wow, okay. I gotta aim like significantly, significantly under. Don't know, don't know where that round went. All right, this clip here is really giving me some issues here. Okay, let's see if I can at least manage to hit this last shot. There we go. Wow, I have to hold this thing significantly under that target to make hits. Okay. Now, oh God, don't make me pick. This is actually a really hard decision. This one does have lighter recoil, but this one I'm able to hit targets at 50 yards far easier just because of the rear sight on this one. If I had an M38 chambered in 6.5, that would be perfect. Because this is a really, really nice little rifle. However, this one right here, this one is also very, very nice. If I was hitting out at any sort of real distance and not just at 50 yards, I feel like I'd be able to hit uh, rounds pretty well. And this right here is just a battle sight. It's not exactly uh, made for target shooting. So if you are, you know, fending off the, whoever it is that you're fending off with a Carcano, it wasn't just the Italians that used these bad boys. So pick a country. If you're fending someone off with this thing and they're standing at 50 yards and you just aim center mass and fire, you'll probably hit them. Might be a little low, might be a little high, depending on uh, how hard you jerk that trigger. Man, I don't know. They are both very nice little rifles. This particular 9124, I actually do have some issues with. What the hell? I just tossed my earmuffs up over there and they like rolled down this hill back over to me. Get back up there, you son of a bitch. I do have some issues with uh, this particular Carcano. The bolt on it, the rear uh, cocking piece, whatever it is that this piece uh, is called for the Carcano, it continuously, likes to roll back and stop me from closing the action. This right here is basically a guide rod to make sure that the bolt uh, stays in place, but whenever it's outside the rifle, it can turn, and it does that very frequently on this rifle, and I always get confused as to why I can't close my rifle. I've noticed any time I give it any real legitimate oomph, you know, pulling on it, that's whenever it happens, but as long as I keep it slow and steady, it doesn't really happen. As long as that piece is right where it needs to be, this rifle right here functions very well. They are definitely neck and neck, but I would think that I would pick the 6.5 Carcano over the 7.35. It is a lighter shooting round. This particular rifle is less accurate. Uh, I'm not going off of the uh, 91.24, I'm going off of the Caliber. Uh, these rifles right here are quite inaccurate just because whenever they were converted to carbines they uh they kind of just chopped the barrel off and whenever they were 91 uh, rifles they had gain twist rifling on them so it sped the bullet up more and more and more as it traveled down the barrel so these bullets are not quite able to uh become as stable as they would be whenever they were long rifles and as a result you get a lot of key holing a lot of uh uh just tumbling, spinning, things like that. These rifles are not not very accurate at all. So I'm not going off of the rifle itself. They're both carbines, both very, very similar. But I think I'd pick the 6.5 over the 7.35. If I had a 6.5 M38, like I said, that would be that would be perfect. That would be like the best Carcano I could ask for. As a matter of fact, I might see if I could find one of those. But the 6.5 has less recoil. However, it would be less accurate at longer distances just because the 6.5 tends to be more of a, uh, a rounder uh, bullet. The 7.35 is definitely more of a spitzer shape. But I myself tend to be extraordinarily inaccurate at long distances, so I don't think that is going to particularly matter. I also have to factor in how much easier the 6.5 is able to get than the 7.35. 6.5 ammunition is way more available and way, way cheaper than the 7.35. But the 7.35 is so pleasurable to shoot. Like, like the rifle is just a little bit heavier than this 91.24 that has the uh, 6.5 in it. The recoil is just a little bit harsher, but it's far from not manageable. Man, that is a close call. It is a very, very, very close call, but I'm gonna say the 6.5 is, uh, would be my go-to, mostly because of availability and it does have less recoil. 
All right, well, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, here you go, bud. I finally showed off your rifle. This is, in fact, your rifle that I bought off of you. Good to see you. I hope you're watching this video, and I'm sure, you know, once I tell you that I made a video on it, you're, you're going to come find it. I know you are. Very, very similar rifles. Very, very nice rifles. You know what I want, though? I want a Model 41 Carcano, the last uh, iteration for the Carcano rifle. I fired one of those before. Extremely light recoil, very, very accurate. They're not extraordinarily long like the uh, 91s, but they are longer than the uh, carbines, of course. I would like to get myself one of those, but that might take some time to find. I'm not sure if those are being imported from Ethiopia. I think it's mostly just the carbines. Anyway, if you like this kind of stuff, go and subscribe down below. I do have uh, a future video planned. I'm going to be comparing ballistic testing uh, between the uh, 6.5 and the 7.35 just because I want to see how much better the 7.35 is. Like, the Italians upgraded from the 6.5 to the 7.35 basically at the start of a war because they wanted something better. But how much better is the 7.35 compared to the uh, 6.5? Like, they went through a lot of hell to, to try and make this happen, and they ultimately shot themselves in the foot and just went back to 6.5. I want to know, was all of the headache that they went through worth it? Because if the 6.5 and the 7.35 are basically the same and they can do basically the same things, then I'm going to say, damn, man, you really screwed up, Italy. <laughs> But well, we won't know that until the ballistics testing. I think that's gonna be really, really cool. I've always wanted to see comparisons between these two uh, uh, cartridges. I'm sure there are videos out there, but I want to see the comparison myself. If you want to be around for that, subscribe. Uh, I do gun crap like this all the time, as you can tell from my car down there. It's damn near shot in half. As a matter of fact, I actually shot the door off the other day. I had to like pick it up out of the yard and I got it leaning against the rear tire over there. Now that is progress. Go ahead and check down in the description below. You're gonna find a link to my second channel. It's a gaming channel. YouTube doesn't like guns, so that gaming channel is my fallback plan. You'll definitely support me by uh, subscribing to that channel as well. And I think you'll have a lot of fun watching me get really, really drunk and try to play video games. I say try because man, video games are so much harder to play when you're absolutely freaking toasted. And I really like whiskey, so. I can drink and still be productive, and that's not something that a lot of people can say. I really wish that ammunition in the United States was not at a freaking premium right now, and it is difficult to find, because man, I would really love to run these Carcanos just a little bit more. Just a little bit more, but I gotta save that ammo for future videos, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring these back inside before I tempt myself anymore. Thanks for watching, guys. You guys go off. Have a fantastic day. Uh, check out the uh, Patreon page. I do Q&As on that, and I just made myself a Discord. Uh, you're going to find a link to that in the description. Don't really know what's going to happen in the Discord. Don't know if nobody's going to show up or if some people are going to show up, and I don't know if it's going to like explode in population. But, hey, if you want to talk to me, that's a good place to do it. Okay. All right. Temptation is heavy. I've only got like 40 rounds of 6.5 left and, I don't know, probably about 40 rounds of 7.35 left. And I want to save them because I have more videos that I'm going to be making. And the 6.5 I could find pretty readily, pretty easily, but it is super expensive right now. And the 7.35, forget about it. <laughs> forget about that one. What I have is just what I have. Uh, Thanks for watching, guys. Oh, hold on. Before we go too far, I'll go ahead and show this off. I was not expecting this on the 735 ammunition. The bottom of the bullets kind of look like... I have no idea if the camera's focusing right now. The bottom of the bullets kind of look like, a, uh, like a, a vegetable can or a, bean or a can of beans or something. Like a, a can of food that we would see here in the United States today. And I don't really know why they did that. My guess is probably just ease of manufacturing, but that's what it looks like. Now the French actually had a similar rim on their rounds as well. Back whenever smokeless powder was just becoming a thing, uh, they were using the uh, LaBelle rifles 
and those rifles had tubular magazines. And if you have two rounds pressed up on each other like this in a tubular magazine and you pull that trigger, the recoil's gonna make a round detonate. So they actually had little tapered, uh, whatever that is, I guess we'd call it like a, a ridge uh, inside the actual butt of the bullet. And the nose of the cartridge behind it would actually rest in that ridge just like that. This way you could fire around and not have the rounds detonate in your magazine. I doubt that's what the Italians were doing with their 735 just because it's a Monlicker style clip and I don't think that they were using any uh, tube magazines by any real significance. So I have no idea. If you know the answer to why these look like this, go ahead and let me know. Okay, now I'm done rambling. Thanks for watching. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garen. <laughs> It's a shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.